there's only one ocean. We just give it different names. It has different currents all around the world. As humans, we're the most destructive species, but we're not superior. We just need to humble ourselves and be kaitiaki. Why not have Mataranga Māori and Te Ao Tauiwi? Two hands working together is better than one, don't you reckon? In the water behind us, I keep looking back, because this <laughs> is it here. Um, there were 112 million mussels in 2007. And then we came back again in 2008 and 2009 and we started to notice that the bed was declining. Fast forward to 2019 and the mussels had reduced to just under 80,000 in the entire harbour. The old people were dissatisfied with the science that was emerging for them because it wasn't helping them to make the decisions they wanted to make. Local people know their places better than anyone else, you know, so we can't come in saying we have any kind of knowledge around it, especially if we don't know the places. They'd notice the decline in numbers and the size decrease as well. We went down and dove based on the marks that the old people told us. And many of them hadn't been in the water for 30 odd years because they're quite old. And they would say, mussels start here, end there, scallops there, this here, pippy there. And then we went down and dove it. And they were spot on because we GPS marked what they said. Their mātauranga of this harbour was astounding and uh, that gave me confidence to continue. And as I was diving along, like the harbour is quite grey and the whole bottom was orange and I thought, wow, so pretty. And it was pretty. Um, and then I looked closer and there were like piles of 11 um, the Pātangaros sea stars on like five to six layers deep. There was 1.2 million sea stars in that, just that one little area. And so they were decimating our mahinga kai, our food basket. There was a cry from some members of the community to cull the starfish, but no kone rātou, they're from here, they're meant to be here. So I was the handbrake and refused to do it because of their mana and their modi. If we were to do that, what is a balance number to remove? Do you just take out everything? We looked at different removal trials for the starfish, and we wanted to make sure that the removal techniques that we're applying respects the harbour and also the resources and abilities of the community, because it's a very community-driven project. And so if we were to go into remove those sea stars, what would we do with them? because we can't just take them to the dump or just leave them on the shore, that can't happen. So we started to investigate other options and our thinking was a circular economy. Could we make a product out of the sea stars, uh, in this case hand cream, because they're uh, bioactive collagen, and then if any profits were made, could that money come back to the harbour, so from the harbour for the harbour? That was our kaitiakitanga approach to sea star hand cream, which smells really nice. And actually, you know, all the aunties, um, all the nannies, they were like, oh! <laughs> all their wrinkles and stuff, it was really funny. So um, maybe that's the next upgrade because we've all got wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we talk about the ocean, generally you hear tangaroa, guarding of the ocean, and if you talk about the forest or the bush, you hear Tāne Mahuta, the two male guardians, but this project is Wahine Le. 
it seems natural that, you know, we have these different generations of wahine working here, but um, when I was young, no one ever said to me, honey, do you want to go for a dive? Do you want to come fishing? They would ask my brother who hated it. I think that really stuck in my puku because I love the ocean so much. For Māori, it's all about succession, about passing on that knowledge. And I guess what's great about this project in particular is that we all fuck a papa to Ohiwa, which I think is pretty rare when you look at other research projects. It's been just really awesome to be able to come back with science skills, mātauranga skills, and act in that kaitiaki sense again. Because it's a place I'm very connected to and I have a lot of love for, I just find it really awe-inspiring. For me, Ohiwa Harbour has always been the place that I associated with my parents first and foremost as a kid and then as I got older, understanding how much further back it goes in terms of our whakapapa. So it's the wahapū or omato tsipuna, so it's the place of our ancestors. It's where they used to come to collect kai. This is our mahinga kai. It's really special, but it also feels quite natural. Ngāti Awa produces really excellent wahine, I must say. You know, being descendants of Wairaka, something about our wahine is just so powerful. And I've always been surrounded by really powerful, brilliant wahine. Five, five, two. I had promptly been trained in Western science, so it was a real amazing opportunity for me to learn and observe how you go about being inclusive of mātauranga Māori, engaging with iwi, hapu, um, whānau, and yeah, what does that actually look like in practice? So this here's a cushion star, and through my PhD research, we actually found um, them predating on the small juvenile muscles. And so because they're in such vast numbers, we believe that they might be a potential bottleneck for muscle recruitment. Um, and so we want to look further into um, their predation pressures on, on muscles. We wanted, could we grow the muscles on biodegradable lines so that they attach as a whānau? And when they fall, they fall as a whānau and then reattach to the seafloor as a whānau. And in time, could we increase the population from 80,000 to 81,000 maybe? In July last year, 2023, um, we went for a dive and, um, oh, I might cry. I cried then too. And um, nobody cries over muscles, <laughs> but, um, but I did. Um, that, the, that the sea floor was covered, like just covered like it was when I first dove in 2007 here. And um, in the place that my daddy used to bring me as a child. Um, I don't know why I cry. I cry maybe because I am the harbour. And, um, oh, excuse me. But, um, so, if this is a place where my nanny and Koro brought my daddy to get mussels and Pippi and Tuangi, and it's a place that he brought us to come and get mussels, even though I hated it because it was so much work and not fun, um, then it's a place that my, my mokopuna will come. It just shows that Ohi was trying to recover herself and that she just needs some assistance. If we had followed a standard mainstream approach to marine restoration, I don't think we would have gotten the results we got. We have 16 million mussels and around three and a half hectares. 
part of it is because it was co-developed with the people who know this place for generations. The other part is the innovation through Hinete Iwiwa and Hine Moana and recognising that they are kin, so there could be a relationship from the land to the water to help the restoration. Science is about problem solving. Mātauranga Māori is about answering those problems as well. I believe that every hapū we have our own knowledge particular to ourselves. But that doesn't mean that it can't be scaled up or replicated elsewhere. We just share everything with other coastal hapū iwi who are trying to restore their mahinga kai too. Mātauranga Māori replicated, yes. Powerful, yes. Successful, absolutely. I definitely hope that our actions will be something that will have benefit seven generations down the track to ensure that it's good enough for them to take over and to make it better themselves. And just keeping those connections to the environment and to our mātauranga and to our histories, I know it's been really important in my life. When I think about our ocean, I think about if you had a child who was sick, would you not scour the universe for a cure? And would you care if the group that held the cure, would you care what colour skin they had? You wouldn't. All you would care about is that your baby is sick and we need to do something. And that's how I see the ocean. The ocean is our baby.